I'm Bob Lucido, and this is the Bearcat Training Camp, where we're offering in-depth business building training for Team Beachbody coaches. Well, I'm thrilled to have one of my best friends and superstar Beachbody coach, Lisa Hansen, here with us today. Great to be here. Thank you. All right. I'm so happy to have you here. Thanks. Lisa, as I said, Lisa's a great friend of mine. We were friends before Beachbody. Um, you know, a little uh, footnote there. Don't forget to invite your friends. Um, uh, she has built an amazing business over the last six years, and um, one of the reasons I'm so excited about having Lisa here with us today is she really is the prime example of the kind of thing that we're trying to share with this group. Um, she's been a build business builder since day one um, and just has had amazing success. She's been a coach for six years. Uh, she's been in Success Club for 60 months in that six-year time period. Um, she's built her business up to five-star diamond level. Um, she has a downline now of approximately 5,000 coaches on her team, Team Spirit, which is uh, just knocking it out of the park. Uh, team Spirit has four five-star diamond or above coaches already. Uh, and you'll remember, if you're watching these videos, one of the goals and the pace that we set out uh, when building for long-term success in this business is hitting that goal of having five five-star diamond level coaches in your own downline. Um, this is four-fifths of the way there, and it shows. Uh, she's a six-figure earner um, and a major six-figure earner. Uh, I think just about three-quarters of the way to the Millionaires Club, and you know you can do the math on that one. Um, uh, what else can I say about Lisa other than being a fabulous person? Uh, she went diamond in 30 days. Actually, uh, back in the beginning, when Team Bearcat was only 50 coaches or so, um, uh, Lisa was the first one uh, in our group to, to make it uh, that quickly. Um, and uh, you know, since then, it's just been it's just been amazing. So, welcome, Lisa. Thank you. Um, you know what I remember about Lisa uh, that always impressed me so much, especially in the beginning, was her ability um, to just receive instruction, be an amazing student, really, um, and then go out and implement. Do you remember those early days, Lisa, what it was like to be a brand new coach? I sure do, absolutely. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about um, the things you did, you know, before the, being the founder of Team Spirit and having 5,000 coaches? What did it look like when Lisa was a brand new coach um, and just got started? How did you get the ball rolling? You know, I just really fell in love with Shakeology from a health perspective. I it fell in love with the way that Shakeology made me feel. I fell in love with its abilities to reverse and prevent disease. And so my personal story is I reversed prediabetes, went off blood pressure medicine, and lowered my cholesterol significantly. So I had this gift to be able to share with other people. And what I started to do is right from the beginning is I made a list of everyone in my life that could benefit from the health benefits of what Shakeology has to offer. And I started to really look at who in my circles are the greatest influencers. And by that I mean who are the people in my life who have large networks of people whether they had a business or whether they were very popular, they were very sociable, they are the people in your circles who have a great influence in the people around them. And I started to talk to them and remember that you know, something right from the beginning, not even knowing exactly the power of network marketing, is I knew I had to look for people who had large circles as well as my own circle. And I had a lot of enthusiasm because I loved Shakeology. I fell in love with what it was doing and I wanted to share that with other people. So what did it look like in the beginning when you were, um, as you say, reaching out to influencers, which is a great um, thing to catch, folks. If you're taking notes, you know, take that down. Who are the people who you know, or maybe you don't even know them, know of, who you know have circles of people around them, leaders of programs or um, you know, people who are um, 
quite frankly, influencers who are people who are active leading groups or who are active, um, already sort of known within their field kind of a thing. Um, and, uh, and, and can you start making lists of those folks to reach out to and add to your, your um, invitation list? I mean, one of the things I remember about Lisa in the beginning is that she was one of those people, I mean, I wish I had a hundred personally sponsored coaches who were Lisa Hansen because she was that coach when you said, make your list of 50 people when, when you first signed up. She came back to me the next day with a hundred people. Um, can you share a little bit about how you, thought, how you filled your paper with names, and, and one of the things that I uh, watched you do over and over again um, and watched drive success for you was continually making sure that list was alive and continually making sure that you had new people to talk to all the time. Um, and I think for a lot of us, especially newer coaches, um, it's hard to, to know how to do that. Um, could you share a little bit about what you did in those early days? Yeah, absolutely. I definitely, you know, I wasn't on Facebook when we started, mm -hmm. so it's a little bit, um, I wouldn't say different because I think this is really important for people to learn is that you're going to be looking at your Facebook audience and Instagram as a way to network, but you're also looking at your community mm -hmm. and who you know already. Who is the hairdresser that's been doing your hair for the last five years that you love, that trusts you, and hello, she has a huge network of people that she can work with. Influencer. Influencer. <laughs> um, acupuncturists, chiropractors. Um, I made sure I went to the same post office every day, so I got to know the people there. The people at the bank, I've been doing the banking with for so many years. I even looked at family members who were my cousins, who were my aunts, who had businesses of their own. And so, again, these are influencers. These are people who not only could really benefit from what we have to offer with Shakeology, but could really benefit by expanding and growing their business and even you know, making more money. So it's a win-win. We have a great product that is one of the best. It's a superfood shake. It's one of the best shakes on the, on, out there that you can ever get. And we have this great business opportunity. So when I started, I knew that I needed to improve my health, but I also needed to improve my financial health. And so I started to look for those people, and that is what made up my list. And sure. when Bob says, make a list of 50, and I made a list of 100, um, yes, of course, it's a little bit of overachiever in me, but I honestly did everything that Bob told me to do. I would text him, I would call him, say, okay, I did what you asked me to do. What's next? I was always asking, what is next? And I didn't try to reinvent the wheel. I just plugged into the system and started to really build my skills as I was learning from you. Right. Because you would tell me what to do. And Lisa was a Again, an example of, of what we talk about, going out doing the business before spending hours and hours and weeks and months trying to figure everything out. Before the compensation plan you know, was crystal clear to you, Lisa got that very first thing that we talk about, which is, this is all about inviting. It starts with inviting, it grows with inviting, and it ends with inviting. It's all about inviting, and everything else falls into place, um, and, uh, you know, so, again, this sort of example of the, the kind of coach that you want to get, but it's also the kind of coach that you want to be, and that is, you know, what Lisa was just describing, a proactive grower, a proactive student. Um, you know, don't get your two exposures a day and then sit on your laurels. Get your two exposures a day and say, what's next? I think that's a very important piece there is that, as a new coach, the very best thing that you can do, really, is reaching up to your upline saying, what's next? Mm -hmm. And then getting out there and doing it. Uh, because there's nobody who wants you to succeed more than your upline, right? Right, and it's also, it, it's even a little bit beyond that, is not what's next, but what do I say? How do I say it mm -hmm. to this person? You know, you have the invitation, and perhaps you set up a meeting with that person, hopefully, or you invite them to coffee, or you say, 
well, I'd love to come over and stop by. Or you make a phone appointment where you're going to get them on the phone. And even now, you know, a lot of people enjoy hiding behind the texting or the messaging, which is fine. The reason I call it hiding behind it is because your enthusiasm for what we have here that truly changes lives comes across so much better in person or on the phone. And when you can offer that to someone, there's this is a relationship business. Your relationship with that person is going to build and the trust is going to build. People will join you because they like you and because they trust you. So building that relationship is so incredibly important. So when you get them on the phone... Yeah, I, I definitely agree with you there. Um, you know, driving to that personal connection, even if you meet someone on social media, um, learning how to get to that phone conversation. And, you know, sometimes you get all the way through the connection through social media. Um, but th there's a difference when you can drive it to that personal connection. Um, at least I know for you, in the beginning, it was a lot about you setting up abilities and opportunities to get together with people. And you talk about the going out for a coffee or inviting people over for a, um, you know, either a, a sampling or, uh, I know in the beginning you were even do, doing business opportunity presentations, pulling people together. Um, talk a little bit about what you would actually share once you're able to get the people into um, uh, an opportunity to have uh, personal conversation, whether it's on the phone or hopefully if you're able to even get together in person. Um, and I guess nowadays that can kind of filter into what a, a conversation might look like on, on social media. Um, but what do you share? What, what do you talk about? I literally went out and bought a small blender and I had my almond milk and my Shakeology packets and I would go over and I would say I have something incredibly amazing to share with you that has completely changed my life it got me off my blood pressure medicine, it reversed my prediabetes I really think that this is something that not only you could benefit from but your um, family members and your network of people could benefit from I would make them a shake and I would hand it up to them and I would say, here, drink this. And as they were drinking about it, I would then start to talk about the business. And at that time, I didn't have much of a success story. I was mostly referring to the people who came before me who had success stories. And I just said, you know, I have a friend who ha has started this and she has started to share psychology with the people in her life. And she's earning three to five hundred dollars a month, and that was my first goal. If I wanted my car payment paid for, so I made these goals that increased along the way. But I would start to talk to them about the amazing business opportunity of supplementing your income. So in the beginning, for you, sharing the business opportunity was really simply sharing what you were up to, sharing your own goals and what you were doing with Shakeology and the business opportunity. That's such a cool concept because I think, especially new coaches come in and they think they have to memorize some business opportunity presentation and all this stuff, and you forget that the most powerful thing is our own story. Just sharing, especially even in the beginning of saying, hey, I'm doing this brand new thing, Shakeology, here's what it's doing for me, and I'm participating in the business opportunity and um, not talking about Millionaire's Club, not talking about full-time business or any of that, talking about what are your goals at the time. I'm so excited because I'm getting close to being able to cover my car payment. I'm so excited I'm going to make $100 this month. How cool is that? You know, in the beginning, those are the things that are exciting and they're exciting to share with people because that helps people get interested, doesn't it? It really does. It's amazing. Someone's first paycheck of a commission check of $33, that can be exciting for them. Right. And for me in the beginning, making enough for my car payment was enough to really start to change my life around financially. And as they built from there, they did a study a few years ago that all the people that had to auction off their house or claim bankruptcy, 
if they only had $300 extra a month income coming in, they would not have had to do that. And so when you start talking about your excitement of, yes, I'm earning enough to pay for childcare, I'm earning enough to pay for groceries, I'm earning enough so that I can stay home with the kids instead of going back to work. Start with what you're currently doing, and if you don't have something that you're currently working towards, use the stories of your upline. And I agree with you, Bob, going too far to the millionaires club or even to the income level we are at sometimes can make it a little too far reach. And so start with the people on your team. Start to learn the stories from the people on your team of what this business opportunity has given to them. And for the people on my team, it is staying home with their kids, paying for their groceries, paying for their childcare, paying for their car payments, paying for their mortgage. And then it begins to grow. As you grow, your goals begin to grow. Celebrating the little successes. You know, it's the same way that we coach people along in their fitness journey, right? You don't, you can't sit down with somebody in the first conversation and talk about losing 100 pounds. You got to celebrate that first pound that came off, right? And then it's the first five pounds, and then it's the the, the 10 pounds, and. You know, and it goes not only for those who you're sharing with, but also for yourself. You have to recognize the progress along the way. So, so I just want to, thanks for sharing all that. I want to fast forward you up to the um, uh, next stage in the growth of your business. Um, I remember a conversation, uh, I think it was right after, um, Lisa might have, might have made it to Star Diamond, I'm not sure. It was somewhere in that area between Diamond and Star Diamond, um, where Lisa started to take on the responsibility of leadership and, and leading her team and, and um, you know, working with her personally sponsored coaches to try to move that duplication process. Um, and, uh, and I can remember Lisa calling me up, it was a scary call for me because um, she was expressing that it was getting to be too much. And she was expressing to me, look, I still have a full-time job, I'm a single mom, um, I'm, I'm doing great with the sharing, um, the opportunity, I'm doing great with getting the invitations out and all of that, and people are joining me and it's exciting, um, but I don't know if I can add another layer of training all these new people to do what I'm doing. Um, it, it was kind of one of those you know, crossroads conversation where Lisa was really saying, I just think it's, it's too much for me. Um, and you know, that was a turning point, not only for Lisa's business, but for mine too, because I had to really look at that um, and say, well, wow, that's all totally legitimate. It all totally makes sense. And how do I help? And you know, I had an aha moment. Um, you know, I was blessed to have just made this, the jump myself to becoming full time. And my aha moment was, hey, Lisa, guess what? I'm full time. You're not yet. I know you don't have as many hours in the day to put towards this as I do. Let's team up. Who are your personally sponsored coaches who you're working with, who want to do the business? Let me take some of that burden from you. And we started to team up. And, and really, it was the beginning of what I think is one of the most powerful things that drives duplication in your business. It was the beginning of partnering up and beginning to systemize as a team so that we could together cooperatively get the time and training to all these new coaches who were coming in without requiring people like Lisa who still had a full-time job but not enough time to do it on their own. Um, and uh, you know, I really remember that because it was, it was a big time um, you know, in the organization. Keith Callahan had just gone um, uh, full time as well, and it keeps also in Lisa's upline. I remember that we got together, and that was kind of the beginnings of our sort of inner circle masterminding. How do we make sure collectively, as a little group of leaders, and we were only diamonds, we barely star diamonds at that time, how do we get our team, all of these new people, uh, the information, the training, and support that they needed? Um, and, uh, it, and it just things clicked. Um, do you remember when that happened, Lisa? Absolutely, it was huge. And that is the power of the team, and that's what we're here for. 
And not only was the idea of continuing to recruit new people something that took a lot of time and a lot of focus, not, not a lot of time, but it was something that I definitely had to do, but the idea of having to train people at the same time created this feeling of overwhelming. And when you get that feeling that you're so overwhelmed, sometimes what happens with the emotional body is you just want to quit. And that's the power of a team, is that you don't not only have to do the training and probably would be better if you didn't at first, is I also felt at that time that I didn't have the skills that I needed to develop in order to become a really good mentor and a really good trainer. And so as I was able to bring new people in and have Bob put them through that mentorship program, and as I watched them go through it, I started to be able to develop my confidence and being able to do a leader. And I developed the skills and I did the personal development that was needed to become a leader. But I didn't do that too quickly. I leaned on the team to train the new people that were business builders to help me get them to be really strong and to build their business up to diamond. And I think that's really important to mention is that when we jump too quickly from bringing new people on and then shifting our focus to, oh, now I have to train them, we haven't allowed the time to develop our own leadership qualities. Right. And, and, I, and that's a process that we have to allow. And the only way to learn that is to watch the people who have gone before you, who have created these systems that are proven to work, but they also have developed these certain qualities and skills. And I would watch Bob, and each time I would hear him speak, each time I would get him on a three-way call to be able to talk to a new coach, I was developing my skills as I was going. And again, I was a student again until I was ready. Leveraging. Remember, I put up that little video the other day about leveraging. Perfect example of leveraging and perfect example of doing something else we talk about in, that, in this group, and that is that duplication process. Uh, and kind of from the other side, though, we talk about um, you know support your new coach by doing it for your new coach. We talked about three way calls. We used to do a lot of them back in that day, where you get on the call with your sponsor. Your sponsor really does the presentation, and you're there watching and learning. Um, you know, because the cool thing about this business is you, you got a business right away. At least it was diamond in 30 days, and all of a sudden, boom! I'm a diamond coach. Wait a minute, what do I do? Uh, I'm still learning. Well, that's cool. You, you, the, the cool thing is there's a learning curve here. You have a partner um, and it, you know, so many nuggets in there. I just want to pull a couple of them out. The three-way call, um, making sure that you're being a spectator first, learning. Then you get involved in doing the presentation, but have your sponsor there with you so that there's a support. And then eventually there you're doing it. Your sponsor's just kind of monitoring and your sponsor moves away to work with the next coach. Um, you know, and, and so that's from the, I have a new coach, what it looks like. And then from being the sponsoring coach, it's good to kind of see how that helps your coaches develop into leaders. We want all of our coaches to be leaders. We want to lead leaders, but we can't ask them to be leaders the first week they sign up or 30 days after. Or, yay, just because you're diamond and you did it in 30 days or you did it in six months, you may not yet have all the apparatus to drive and support your coaches and your team the way that you want to. So, um, you know, great example about that. And, and one of the other things that I remember, Lisa, about that conversation um, that sparked all of this um, was, you know, your sharing, I can show people what I'm doing, but the part of, you know, stepping into that next role of being the one who's kind of putting together the mechanisms and the forms and everything for everyone to use and duplicate was the, the piece that was the hurdle. Um, and, and, and Lisa had gotten the point uh, where doing the sharing became comfortable. Um, but also what she was noticing was 
that what has sort of brought on this crisis, if you want to call it that, um, was something that I hear from coaches at the diamond and star diamond level all the time. And that is, well, I have some people, and I have some people who are sharing, but I can't get them to make it to the next step. I can't, I, I can't get them to go and be that next level, self-sufficient leader, so on and so forth. And the conversation then turned to, well, let's look at how you're sharing. So what happened at this time in Lisa's business, and, and what I'm, the reason why I'm highlighting this, because I think it's an important transition for all of us, we come to a certain point where it can't just be about sharing psychology and the fitness program anymore. It has to step into the, the place of how do I find and how do I attract people who actually see the power in the business opportunity, not just the products. Um, and I know that I read about it this time in your business, that was a big aha moment for you and a big switch. Can you talk a little bit about what changed in your mind and the way that you were sharing um, and, 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 and what happened for you when you sort of made that shift of putting out to the universe? This is what I'm looking for. Yes, I'd love to have a million customers who, who love psychology and people in my challenge groups, but now I'm starting to want to find people who want to be my business partner. Um, talk a little bit about how that transition happened for you. Yes, absolutely. What happened was I started to look at the certain types of qualities that I wanted to attract as a business builder. And I actually am a huge believer of law of attraction and manifestation. And so I'm a huge fan of journaling and visualization. And I had already learned these skills from my spiritual practice. And what I did is I got out my journal and I wrote down all of the characteristics of who I wanted to manifest and attract into my business as a business builder. Journal! There's a little homework assignment for everybody. Really catch this because this was a huge shift in Lisa's business. And for all the people who I've seen grow these huge kind of businesses like we talked about in, in Lisa's intro, they've come to this point at one point or another. And certainly the sooner you get there, the better. So she got out her journal. I got out my journal and I started to write who I wanted. I wanted somebody who fell in love with our products. I wanted someone who was self-disciplined, sociable. I wanted someone who was outgoing. I wanted somebody who was teachable. And what I mean by that is they were willing to be open to learning. And I wanted someone who um, was definitely an influencer, someone who was motivated and positive you know, I started to really look at what did I want my team to look like. I, I, it's not just everybody. I didn't want a team of negative Nancys on my team. I wanted someone who had gusto, who was positive and vibrant, um, really looked at this business as an opportunity. They had vision. They had goals. They were able to dream. And so I wrote down all of these characteristics of what I wanted. And wrote them down. Wrote them down. Check that out, people, because you know, I'm sure all of us are listening to this going, yeah, I want that, I want that too, I want that. How come it's not coming into my business? I want it. You have to do more than want it. You know, the way that you attract that to you, the way that you're going to find that person or these people, if you want a team full of leaders, you have to change your mindset and define who it is that you're looking for. We talked about this in the beginning, right? You can't hit a target that you haven't defined. Yes, go out and share with anybody and everyone in the world, but also have a definition of who are these key nuggets that you are looking for. Because remember, we've talked about this before, it doesn't take a whole lot of them. But when you find a handful of them and they go out and do all of this wonderful stuff. They go out and be all of these qualities. Then they become great leaders. And now you start to build a team of great leaders who build great things. Okay, and I just really wanted to underline that because way too many people say, yes, I journal, yes, I dream, I want all of that stuff. But very few people 
actually get out the pen and put it on the paper and do all of that stuff. You gotta take the time to do it and to do the work. Okay, so so you got real clear on, on who on, on, on who it is that you started to look at. How did that impact your sharing? How did that impact the people you were putting on your list of contacts that you were going to start reaching out to? What, what did that look like? Well, I started to look for people who had those qualities. Um, what we focus on is what happens in our lives, and so. I wasn't focusing on what I didn't want, you know, I was very clear of that. I focused on what I did want, and I read that list every single day. And when there is that mind shift change, yes, of course, Bob, you do have to change who you're looking for, and it changes the names that go on your list, but there's something that really happens in this universe is those people come into your life. When you are very clear with who you want and who you're looking for, it's like the, you had a pair of sunglasses on and you couldn't see too good in, indoors. And then all of a sudden you just took them off. And now you see a really crystal clear of what you want it to look like. But it, it goes beyond that. It goes beyond writing it down. If you don't feel it as well, it's not going to happen because you're not crystal clear with what you want. So the second part of that is to close your eyes and to actually do a visualization. For some people the word might be more comfortable daydream. We all know how to daydream. And you start to look at what does it feel like when you meet this person? What does it feel like when they join your team and they say yes? Like, I actually imagine them signing up, and I get the little alert in the online office. You have a brand new coach. And then I not only, I very rarely, I mean, I do manifest and visualize my own success, but I spend a lot of time, or more time, visualizing the success of the people on my team. And so when I'm attracting this person who has all of these qualities that I have written down and then I've taken the time to feel what that looks like, I'm imagining them succeeding. And I'm imagining my celebrating them and celebrating them when they have the success. And so what that does is I would do that every single day. And six years later, I still do it every single day, every morning. And what that does is, you know, it's like a radio and you're listening to a station and it's a little staticky. You can still hear the song, but there's some static in there. When you get really crystal clear with what you want, that's when the channel clicks in and the music comes through beautifully. And that's when the connection happens. All of a sudden, you can spot those people. Yes. Or all of a sudden, those people can spot you. Um, very similar, folks, to what we did with the why in the beginning. Remember, I talked about don't just write it. Definitely write it. Write it. Think about it. What's it going to... When your dream comes true, when your why is a reality, what's it look like? What's it smell like? What's it feel like? Really see it. Really feel it. Because as Lisa said, it's more than just clarifying your vision of where you're going. It's actually allowing you to resonate with the reality of that and to bring that into being. Um, and if that sounds silly to you, just give it a try, okay? <laughs> you trust us for a little while on that one. Um, so, getting clear about who you're looking for, um, super clear, as Lisa just talked about, not just, yeah, yeah, I know who I want, writing it out, thinking about it, meditating on it, um, and then getting to work, getting active, to allow that to happen, which means getting into conversations, starting to look for that person or those people. Um, because remember, back in the video that we did on the pace, and I hope you've watched that one, in my humble opinion, this is not necessarily about recruiting hundreds of people a month. It's about recruiting a few key people each month. And the pace that I've laid out for this group includes one or two business partner relationships per month. So we're not looking to, I don't need 10,000 of these people every single week, but I need to really get locked in 
and I need to get focused because I need two or three of these each month so that hopefully I'm going to get a handful who are going to be my five to ten star diamond coaches in my downline five or six years from now who push the kind of success that Lisa has found um, and that we've seen happen over and over again in our business. So, um, all right. So I know that we're, we're getting a little bit on the edge of, 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 our, of our time here. We try to keep these things um, in a reasonable amount of space so folks can, can watch and enjoy. But I'm just having so much fun. I want to go one more step with you. Um, and that is, you know, when you watch a team grow, and it's one of the fun things about this conversation is, is really being able to lay out through Lisa's story what it looks like from being that day one coach of what do I do, get my 50 person list, starting to do the daily disciplines like Lisa talked about, eventually growing to a point where you do have a few other people who are doing that same thing, living the daily disciplines, doing the inviting, getting all of you plugged in to your upline, your team, to the system so that you can do that leveraging that we talked about and watch that help you grow your team as you're still out there doing the daily disciplines and the phase one activities until eventually you come to a point where you've got some leaders on your team and that's when it's really time to take that next step. And, and, and you know, this is really, I wanted to reach this final question because this is the final step, I think, in the evolution of being a successful coach. Um, and as leaders driving a successful team, we want to develop our coaches. We want to develop them at the pace. I think there's a leadership development pace as well um, so that it doesn't happen too fast and it doesn't happen too slow. And I don't think there's a magic rank where it happens. At some point, you come to a point where you do have two, three, four, five other coaches in your downline who are running with the business and having success. You've got a little inner circle, and that's the birth of your team. Your team within the team that you've been part of. You've been using, you've been leveraging, you've been sort of, you know, you've had the training wheels, or you know, mom or dad's been running behind the bike, and, and then all of a sudden, um, you, you get to that point where, boom, you do now have a circle and it does step into the next layer of growing this business and that's developing a team identity, developing a team autonomy um, and, and then being able to really bring that to life so that it can have a life of its own and start to duplicate. Um, and Lisa, you've done such a great job with that. Um, and Lisa is the founder of Team Spirit. As I said earlier, almost 5,000 coaches strong now. Um, and, and, and just really an amazing set of success that I've watched um, in Lisa's team, really duplicating a lot of the stuff that we talked about today because it's more than just figuring it out yourself. It's how do I pass that on? And then how do I develop cooperatively with the other leaders on my team because once you do have some other people doing it, it's not about you anymore. It's how do we work as a group and how do we have success as a group doing what we do, but more importantly, duplicating what we do and passing it down. So in the closing, whatever, however much time we have left here, can you talk a little bit about what it was like when you came to that transition in the business growth um, and what you've done with your team um, to really help support that growth of team identity and team culture, and um, which ultimately leads to our big goal of duplication. The most important thing is to be able to get to the point where you're empowering mm. the people on your team. Empowerment is um, really important. And with that comes a lot of personal development. I'm a huge fan of John C. Maxwell's mm. books on developing the leader within and then developing the leaders around you. And he has a lot of other ones that are great, all on leadership. And inviting your leaders to do that with you mm. and, and maybe even do it together and to have conversations about all of those. Personal you, development work groups, kind of. Yes, like, Hey, exactly. we're all going to read the same book and we're going to... You know, book of the week club kind of thing, right? Yes, absolutely. And it's also about, we have the systems in place. So what we do on our team is coach basics. And what we did for the longest time is, in the very beginning when I started my team, I would run the coach basics. But I would have the other leaders 
put their people in, but they would be in there as well. And, and they would be helping out and they would be supporting the people that they had in there. And that didn't last too long before I started asking people to co-run with me. So I would ask other coaches, hey, will you co-run the Coach Basics with me or the Emerald of Diamond with me? Will you be willing, I'd love to have you co-run a challenge group with me. And so we started to do them together and more and more at one point with our Emerald to Diamond training, there were four of us in there leading all together. And then as they watch and learn and grow and their confidence builds from the personal development that they're doing and having the support of me in there who has done it before, then they get to the point where, okay, I think you're ready. I think you're absolutely ready to team up with this other leader and you guys go run it. Mm -hmm. And what would happen is I would slowly start to step out of the picture and empower them to do it. And that can be scary for a lot of people at the beginning, but I would say you know, if it makes you feel better, I would be more than willing to be in there as an observer. And if someone asks a question that you don't know how to answer, we can be talking private messaging each other and I can help you give the tools to be able to help that person. Another thing that I would do is, especially in the beginning of um, the team page, I would ask them to be guest speakers on the team call instead of me running it every single week. Or ask them, hey, on um, Friday, would you be willing to do a post? Uh, Flex Friday or maybe it's a, a motivational post or some type of sharing every Friday that they could do in the team page. And what I so teach start, the people... Starting with a cooperative leadership. Yeah, pattern. absolutely. Cooperative. And, and that starts to get them to build their confidence and it also allows them the freedom to bring their ideas into the team page. So it's not just the Lisa Hansen team page, it's all of us because we all can learn from each other. And I teach all of my coaches, don't ever learn from just one leader, you know, just your upline. There's so many different YouTube channels and trainings and find the person that really speaks to you and aligns with your beliefs and who you are. And so as they're out there learning, they get to bring it to our home team. Mm. And they add a lot of value to our team page. I have coaches that really offset my weaknesses. Mm -hmm. But had I not empowered them to step up as a leader and make themselves known as a leader in the team page, that then they would not have been able to step into that. And the team would not benefit from having a wide range of expertise instead of just always from one person. Right. And one of the things I've seen you do, and uh, maybe we can talk about this a little bit too, um, this is something I've always been super impressed with in, in your team. You talked a little bit about doing personal development together, but what I've watched you guys do as leaders is um, doing personal development together, but really sharing it. And, um, you know, so uh, and one of the things that you talked about that you have a personal belief in, and that is the the visualization of your own success, visualization of your team's success, um, and uh, and I know that you on your team, or, or when you at least when you get together with your leaders in the mastermind groups, um, you do like a shared visualization together. Um, so not only saying go do personal development, doing it, doing it together, finding common language and common growth factors, and then practicing together. Can you talk a little bit about what that looks like on your team? Absolutely. Um, I honestly feel that personal development is better when you do it with somebody. And there's so many different reasons of why I believe that. Um, I believe that people have a stack of books and they read through them and they check <laughs> it off when they're done. And I, there's a difference between reading personal development and doing personal development because this type of business that we own brings up insecurities, it brings up doubts, it brings up fear, it brings up the comparison trap, comparing yourself to other people who are more successful or someone comes on that 
gets to a rank faster and they joined after you. Or there's um, a certain element of fear of talking to people. Even coming here, I told Bob that this is out of my comfort zone, you know, and I still do it. It's out of my comfort zone, but I am still here. And the reason is because I know in order for me to grow as a person, I have to be stepping out of my comfort zone every day. So the personal development is about personal growth. It's you changing as a person. And when you're doing the journaling and you're doing the homework, you're not just reading it or listening it in the car, you're pulling out your journal and you're actually doing it. It really helps to have an upline or a group or a success partner who you can share what's coming up for you. What is the doubt that you have? What is the excuses? What are those feelings of overwhelm? Where are they coming from? And then having that other person or other group to be able to share with it. You know, as we know in this business, you hear someone's story, the power of their story. If you can relate, just knowing that someone else feels the same way that you feel helps you have that growth. It brings about that healing. So when you're doing your personal development book, have conversations about what you're reading about. Conversations about the healing that comes with it because that's the only way you're going to change to become the person that you need to be in order to do this business. So some great ideas. People always ask, well, what do I do with my success partner? And what should we talk about? And, you know, some of it's accountability on the daily disciplines. But let's face it, folks, you got to go a little bit deeper than that, right? I mean, hopefully you're already committed to the daily disciplines and the three vital behaviors or four vital behaviors now. You're getting that stuff done. If, if your accountability, especially at this level, you're trying to build a team, and if your accountability with your team leaders is that and it ends there, well, you know, Good luck, okay? Um, you gotta go deeper, and that's why I love this idea, and, 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 and you know, I'm happy that we got to talk about this for a few minutes. Driving success with your leadership group by really getting in and doing, as Lisa's talking about, in a group setting, in an accountability setting, your personal development is just amazing, right? It's not just, hey, did you read um, Eat That Frog this week? Check it off. No, it's, wow, what did you think about what Brian Tracy said in chapter three? Wow, how are you doing that? Or, man, that was a tough one when I tried to do what he talked about in chapter four, and this is what came up for me, and this is what stops me all the time. And, you know, those kinds of conversations, especially with your leadership group, will do amazing things for driving your business forward. Um, and, uh, you know, remember, this can start small. It doesn't have to be, at least it didn't start doing this when she had 5,000 people in her downline. This is the reason she has 5,000 people in her downline. She started doing this as soon as she had one or two or three other people in her team, in her, in her immediate downline, who were willing, right? As soon as you've got a couple who are willing, you get going. And together you're in that sort of life raft in the beginning and you're still attached to the main ship, right? You're still leveraging the team and then slowly you're going to be able to grow and you slowly, as Lisa said, just kind of push off from the main team. The next thing you know, all of a sudden you've got a team. Um, and because you've been doing that personal development together in an open way, connections are driven very deeply and identity is really built. Um, you start to see that that common culture um, that we talk about as a goal when you're building a team, it's hard to, it's hard to, 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 to nail down. It's hard to you know, um, uh, put a form on. It just sort of comes from doing this kind of stuff, right? So in closing, um, I know we've covered a lot of material here. Um, and, uh, you know, we've got coaches in this group from people who just joined this morning all the way up to five, ten star, maybe even a couple of 15 star diamond um, superstars. Um, closing thoughts from Lisa Hansen um, on, um, uh, on advice to anybody on any of those levels um, uh, for, for moving forward from wherever they are to help move forward to wherever they want to get to. 
keep your enthusiasm. Mm. Definitely remember that excitement that you had as a new coach. I think what happens, I can speak from experience six years later, is treat the business like you're a new coach all the time. That you are constantly growing, you are constantly uh, coming up with new ways, you're keeping that enthusiasm that you had right from the beginning when, when you felt it, when you saw this vision of what this can do for your life. I think that's really important and I think that that um, can be a set of skills that you can learn. One of the greatest things that I do is um, Tony Robbins has a YouTube video in incantations of just really building up your energy every day of being able to say, I have a lot to offer. Mm. I hope this business changes lives and start thinking about all the lives that have changed. Because when you get the no's and when you get the struggles, it's that enthusiasm that's going to keep you going. It's that excitement of knowing that this is a gift we have someone to, to give to someone to change their lives. Don't be selfish by not sharing it. This, if Bob had not shared this business with me, my life wouldn't be completely different than it is now. Completely different. I mean, I went from practically being on welfare to almost making a million dollars in this business. And, and if he had not shared his enthusiasm and his faith in this business and what this has to offer people, then I wouldn't be where I am. So why wouldn't I want to pay that forward? Why wouldn't I want to give that to someone else? And I think fear and doubt can come in. And I, I mentioned before the comparison chat trap of what other people are going to think about us, reel it back in. Remember, if my upline had not shared this with me, I would not be here today. Whose life can I go out there and change today? One life at a time. And that's, keep that enthusiasm. Yeah, yeah, very great point. And for those brand new coaches, if you just joined this morning, connect with that enthusiasm. What is it that excites you about this opportunity? What is it that got you into this thing, um, giving yourself the ability to dream of what it might be able to do for you and really latch on to that enthusiasm? So thank you so much, Lisa. Really, really great stuff and, and, and tons of gold nuggets. Um, we'll wrap up, but I'll leave you with the Team Bearcat mantra because listening to Lisa reminded me of it. Um, and it really has been the sort of cornerstone uh, philosophy that I drive my own business forward with and try to share with the whole team and everyone I work with because I really do think that these three words capture the keys to success in this business. And that is faith, enthusiasm, and action. You gotta believe in what it is that you're sharing and you have to believe in yourself. You have to have enthusiasm and excitement and connection related to what it is that you're doing. And finally, you got to take the action. You can't be sitting in the closet with this stuff, folks. you got to get out there and do it. Faith, enthusiasm, and action. Thanks again for joining us at the Bearcat Training Camp. We'll see you next time. Thanks, Lisa. Welcome. Thank you.